We've been on the smash burger train for the last year and haven't made regular thick burgers. And our kids said it's time to branch out. So it raised the question, which grill makes the best hamburger? We decided to find out. Here at the Barbecue Lab, we're blessed to have multiple appliances to cook on since we review the best products in outdoor cooking and outdoor living. So when the kids asked for thick burgers, I wondered which grill would make them best. And I was curious if we or our friends could tell the difference in the type of grill we used. The goal for today is to take the most popular and readily available cooking appliances you'll find in American backyards and see which one cooks the best burger in a blind taste test. We're going to focus on pure flavor today and not get lost on cheese and condiments. It's all about the burger, so here's how the test is going to go. These are hamburgers, not cheeseburgers, so no cheese. We're going to use the same seasoning on each patty, and it's a generous sprinkling of our all-purpose seasoning recipe that you can find on our website. Our goal is to cook each burger to an internal temperature of 130 degrees measured by our Thermoworks Thermopen and do a blind taste test to see if we can discern a difference between each one. We'll taste them, see if we can identify each one and end up with a winner. Now, when it comes to a thick burger, I know the quality of the beef really matters. So we partnered with Blackbird Farm out of Rhode Island to source our burgers for this cook. Now you can order the same burgers that we used for this test on their website, and we're using the six ounce Black Angus patties for this test. This beef is from a single family owned farm in Rhode Island and not a conglomerate or a co-op. So you have single farmer beef that you can source online, just like we did. Now, if you want to run the test with us, just head to blackbirdfarmmeat.com and use the code barbecue lab burger on any size burger or ground beef through the month of July. With both free and flat rate shipping options, you'll get it fast without breaking the bank. Now the first grill in our test is a wood pellet smoker. We're using the Grilla Grills Silverback AT that we tested in our best pellet grill under $11.99 video. And I'll link to that in the description below and up here in the card if you'd like to check that video out. This grill is a pellet grill, which can do both hot and fast grilling, as well as low and slow smoking. But today we're setting the silverback to 225 degrees Fahrenheit and letting it cook in a low heat smoke. We verified the temperature with our Thermopin 1, and it took us right around 50 to 60 minutes to get this farm fresh burger to an internal temperature of 130 degrees. Here's what the burger looked like when we pulled it off the smoker and put it on our brioche bun. Will this smoky goodness take the prize? The next grill that we needed to light was the fire pit grill, and we're using our Brio X24 smokeless fire pit along with the outpost grill. We loaded the X24 with cherry wood and lit it up with the sous vide gun from Grill Blazer. Once the fire had a good base, we added the outpost grill to the outpost rod and let it heat up close to the fire. The fire pit burger hit an internal temperature of 130 degrees in only six and a half minutes with a beautiful crust from searing over the fire. Here's what the fire pit burger looked like when placed on the bottom bun. A charcoal kettle grill is next, and we're using the Kamado Joe Kettle Joe that we picked up on a flash sale around Christmas last year. This is our first cook on the Kettle Joe, and we're hoping to get some good charcoal flavor out of this in our testing today. We started the coals at a chimney using the Fireballs fire starter, and we had coals that were ready to use in about 15 minutes. Once the grill came up to temperature, we put the patty on and let the charcoal work its magic. The burger was done in right around the eight minute mark in our cook. And here's what the Kettle Joe burger looked like when we got it on the bun. I felt like this test wouldn't be complete without having a gas griddle as a part of the comparison. We built the LaGriddle 30 inch stainless steel flat top into our outdoor kitchen, and it's been the griddle we use the most for the last three years. We lit the griddle and let it warm up for 15 minutes to get it ripping hot. The burger on La Griddle was a rather quick cook, taking just five minutes to hit our internal target temperature. I initially thought that the outside crust on this burger would be dark and bitter, 
but I was pleasantly surprised how good the crust turned out with the patty being much thicker than a smash burger. Here's a shot of the LaGriddle burger once we got it on the bun. The last grill on the list is a gas grill, the kind that you'd find in a high percentage of the backyards here in America. Today we're testing with our American Renaissance 36 inch grill that we have built into our outdoor kitchen. This grill can easily get up to 700 degrees in just a few minutes, and it's been our weeknight staple here at the Barbecue Lab. Here's a tip. Whenever we light up our grill, we turn the lights on whenever the grill is on, so we know if the lights are on, the burners are on. If we ever leave it on accidentally, we'll be able to see the lights and check on it before we waste hours or days of gas. We put the burger on the ARG grill and it finished on high in just six minutes flat. Here's how the burger on the American Renaissance looked when we put it on the bun. So the burgers are done and here's how the test will go. We have four taste testers today and they're each going to get a section of the burger that we cooked on each grill. We have Addie, Melissa, our friend Jamie, and I'll also get a crack at it. Each burger is assigned a letter on the slate presentation board and the taster has no idea which burger they'll be tasting at any time. It's a taste bud challenge to see if any of us can tell the difference between the cooking methods. Addie is up first, so here we go. I really like this. I'm used to smash burger all the time. So having a normal burger is really refreshing. That was really good. The um, American Renaissance gas grill. This one's good. Tastes a little bit charred on the outside. I'm guessing that this one, because it's a little bit charred, is the La Griddle because it got more cooked on the outside than the other one did. I'm hungry. <laughs> okay, time for C. This one looks like it's got a lot of seasoning on it. I think that this one is the fire pit the Brio. Working our way through the alphabet here. D. I swear, you just cut the same burger into mm. fifths. It tastes exactly like the last one I just ate. <laughs> I'm gonna guess Tomato Joe, the red one. I think this one is the Grillo Grill because it tastes smoky, which is kind of a coincidence because that was the last one I tasted. But holy cow, you just cut up the same burger into fourths. I really liked all of them equally. I didn't think I had a, I had a favorite. They were all just burgers. <laughs> there goes A. Very juicy and flavorful. Definitely medium rare. I'm picking up a lot of the spices. I'm not getting a whole lot of sear, but definitely pick up the spices and the juice from the burger on A. Because there's no sear, I'm wondering if it's the uh, pellet grill. That's my guess. All right, we're trying B. Nice medium rare. Seasoned very well. I don't pick up any smokiness. I get a little bit of searing, but very excellent, juicy. Uh, juice is still there. Very nice, very nice burger. I don't know, I'm wondering if that's the flat top. That would be my guess. Very similar tasting. Cooked nice and medium. I would say probably light to medium charring. I don't really pick up any smoke flavor, but very similar to the others. I don't know, I'm gonna go with the fire pit. All right, we're going with D. Cooked medium, not nearly as juicy as the other three that I have tried. I'm not picking up any smoke smoke tendencies. It seems like it's for, it lost its juice, so I'm wondering if this one came from the flat top. That would be my guess. Going with E. Picking up more char off this. I'm picking up a little bit of charred seasoning. Juicier than the one before, so they're still, still juicy. I am guessing that this came off the gas grill. We'll dive in with letter A. Mm, that's a good burger. There is another layer of flavor that's unexpected. And I'm guessing it's either the charcoal. Don't think it's the smoker, but it could be the smoker. Don't think it's the fire pit. I'm gonna guess this is the kettle maybe. Okay, for now I'm guessing that's the kettle gel. B. I don't think I'm picking up on any other extra flavors besides just the burger itself and the seasoning. I think I'm gonna guess gas grill for this one. We'll stick with gas grill. All right, let her see. Hmm. I feel like the texture is a little bit different on this one. I think this one might be the pellet grill. I'm not necessarily picking up a smoky flavor, 
but I feel like the texture is slightly different. It's not as moist as the others, maybe. So for now, I'm gonna guess pellet grill for that one. D, that one's moist. I can't tell. It's really good. It seems like it's retained a lot of its juices. I can't tell what that one is. Let's see. I don't think it's the griddle. Could be the gas grill. Maybe, maybe it's the gas grill. I don't know, I can't tell. E, okay, I think I know this one. There's a lot of char on both top and bottom. I think that this one is the Le Griddle. It's nice and moist on the inside, but there's a solid char on the top and the bottom. Now, hmm, now that I've been through them all. Okay, yeah, I still think the A is the Kettle Joe. I feel like I'm picking up on charcoal. Yeah, Kettle Joe, Grilla Grill. Mm, this one's really good. This one's just really juicy. This one might be my favorite, but I don't know which, I don't know what it was cooked on. Yeah, that one's little griddle. I've got that one nailed down. So Kettle Joe, Grilla Grill. Don't know, but it's my favorite. Little griddle. Mm. I don't know. One of these is gas grill and one of these is fire pit. I'm gonna guess this is the gas grill and this is the fire pit. Those are my guesses. All right, here we go. Okay, <clears throat> on that, I don't detect a crust at all. Or any kind of sear on the outside. Maybe there is one, I didn't detect it. Granted, I'm the last one to taste test. It's sitting in the warming drawer for a minute. I'm getting the seasoning through. Beef tastes good, happy with that. I'm gonna guess that this is the Grilla Grills off of, off of the, to start. B. Okay, on B, I'm getting a sear. There was a sear on it. I can't tell if it was on both sides, but I got a sear, a little bit more intense flavor on this one. Hmm. I don't know what that is off the top of my head. The This one, I did like this one better than this one so far. Okay, C. <laughs> this one I can tell I seasoned <laughs> because it's a heavier seasoning. This one's good. This is tricky. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I'm gonna have to come. I'm gonna have to come back to this one. I don't know off the top of my head. This is D. Okay, that has a different flavor. That one tastes flavorfully different than the others I've had so far. Okay, first impressions. Maybe that one's the fire pit. Can't tell, but that one flavorfully tastes different. I'll have to come back to that one. I'm not sure yet. And E. Man, this is tough. If I had to guess, this one tastes like it has a little bit of an extra flavor added to it. I'm going to go with this one being the Kettle Joe. Could be completely wrong. I think that's what I'm going to go with on this one. Man. <clears throat> I think I've locked that one in. I think this is the griddle because it's got the dual sear. Sear on both sides. <clears throat> and that all-purpose seasoning is a little bit more blackened than on the others. And so I think this is the griddle. I still think this is Kamado Joe. My guess is Grilla Grills, A. The griddle, C. Kamado Joe, E. That means I'm left with gas grill and fire pit between these two. <clears throat> if I had to guess, I would go gas grill, B, fire pit, D. Hmm. If I had to guess, my favorite, I would say my favorite is B. Probably because it is still the most medium rare after these have been done for an hour and 15 minutes while we're <laughs> testing them out. That might be the reason why, but I really like B. <clears throat> it's still quite moist. Uh, C has dried out a little bit. A is a different texture than the others. Um, e has a little bit of a aftertaste to it, which makes me think, which makes me think it's the Kamado Joe. And I, I got no issue with D either, but D's good. So this was an interesting test. It turns out it was a lot harder to identify the grill being used than we expected. I thought going into it that I would be able to tell the charcoal and smoked burgers right away. And it turns out it wasn't that easy. So what's the takeaway here? Well, first off, as long as you've got delicious, high quality beef to work with, you're winning right out of the gate. Second, if you know how to use your particular grill, you can cook 
a delicious burger. Now burgers are a short cook, so it's not like we're smoking a brisket here. Choose your favorite grill, whether it's a gas grill or a fire pit, charcoal, pellet, or griddle, and get out there and grill. Third, make sure you're using an instant read thermometer to be able to tell where your burger is on the doneness scale so you hit your target temperature. There's nothing worse than overdone beef when you're shooting for that medium or medium rare, and an instant read thermometer like the Thermapin can guarantee you're gonna hit that temperature mark. Fourth, treat yourself to some good quality beef from Blackbird Farm, and enjoy some delicious hamburgers this summer. Remember that you can use the code BARBECUELABBURGER on the website blackbirdfarmmeats.com to get a discount on ground beef and burgers through the month of July. A special thanks to David and Brandon and Sarah at Blackbird Farm for being a part of this video. Now I know a lot of you have multiple options to cook from on your patio, so give this test a try for yourself and see if you can taste the difference. I'd love to hear if your taste buds are up to the test. Now, if you haven't joined us yet on Instagram or the other social platforms, there's some fun behind the scenes footage that we'll be posting from this video, as well as Ethan's first cook on the Kettle Joe coming soon. Now, we'd love to have you join us and get to know the gang between YouTube videos. Now, as always, check out our shop page at thebarbecuelab.com forward slash shop for all of your outdoor cooking needs. From the best grill cleaner to our favorite spatulas, fire starters, aprons, and more, we've compiled our favorites on the shop page and in the description below. Melissa does an awesome job keeping our descriptions and the shop page updated with the best in outdoor cooking, so you don't have to guess at what's worth buying in barbecue. I'm David Gafford from the Barbecue Lab, and I can't wait to see you next time.